My name is Patrick Donovan. That's my Twitter handle up there. That's my website. I do not have session resources for this session because, well, there really aren't. Well, there's going to be one resource, and hopefully you open it very shortly. But honestly, this is not a session where I'm going to give you tools. This is not a session where I am going to tell you what to do tomorrow. This is not a session where I'm going to tell you a lot of things you need to be doing. Instead, hopefully you're figuring that out for yourself. Because this session came about because, well, I get to go to a lot of conferences. And for the last year or so, I always walk away with the same feeling at a conference. Why do we have so many of these low-level sessions that focus just on tools? They don't really focus on change in the classroom. Now, I know why we have it, because we do have a lot of people who are still learning this stuff early on. And there's still some people at this conference who still don't know how to share a Google Doc. But that's okay, because we're all learners somewhere on that spectrum, right? As long as we're continually moving forward, constantly learning, trying to find better ways to do things, that's okay. We don't have to know everything yet. Keyword being, of course, yet. So, in my mind, I kept thinking about why is it then, it, it actually came out because, well, I like to listen to people. So, I have weird hearing. So, I'm like deaf on the right side, and because of that, like, I get to hear people's conversations. Like, if you were trying to talk to me right now, I would hear them for some reason more so than you, and I can't figure it out, so I get to hear a lot of people's conversations on my conferences. It's not creepy, trust me. But anyways, you know, like somebody one time was just saying, you know, like, I only get to learn when I come to a conference. I'm like, well, that's bad. I mean, day of technology where we have information at our fingertips and really at my wrist, if you ask this lovely person anything I want to know, except I muted it for now, so I'm not getting distracted by my watch, we shouldn't have to come to a conference to learn, right? We should never actually have to wait till October, till iTech happens, to come and learn. Keep coming, though, especially because I'm on the board now, so I want you to come, so I can stay on the board. That's a kind of important thing. But we shouldn't have to wait to this point. And more importantly, we shouldn't just come to a conference and just come away with a ton of tools and then have no idea what we're doing the next day. And then the next year, we come to the conference again at the same exact point we were the year before. I mean, that just, it's, you know, insanity, right? Do the same thing, expect different results. And then we get to the analogy that popped in my head, because I was trying to figure this out for a while, and I love analogies, so I thought about this. Don't just fill your tackle box, become a better fisherman. Now, I grew up in Minnesota. I had a cabin. Okay, we were, it's not a big cabin. I, mean, I think we could fit two to three of our cabins in this room alone. It was a two-bedroom, tiny shack, but it was in the middle of a bay. That was our lake. Our cabin is located, I can tell you, because I know exactly, because I know this lake better than the back of my hand. The cabin is right here, beautiful view. <coughs> but I grew up fishing. From the day I could walk, I think there was a pole in my hand fishing off the dock, going in the boat, going fishing. And I tend to go overkill on things. If I like to do something, I do it a lot. And so I wanted to learn how to become a really good fisherman. My uncle fished a lot. To get in his boat, you had to step around one of the 10 tackle boxes. And there's no room, there's no room for you. I mean, pretty much there's room for him and his tackle. And that was about it to the boat. So I'd have to like find a little corner and fish with him. But he had a ton of lures. And so I was always trying to find a way to get more and more lures, right? That's actually the view of our dock. Family ended up selling it a few years back so they don't have the cabin anymore. So of course all I have are memories. But I spent most of my childhood in that lake, mostly in a boat. Now, when I was 15, we took a trip down to Bass Pro Shops in Springfield, Missouri. That is the headquarters of Bass Pro. I went down there for the spring fishing sale with my uncle and some other relatives, and I had about six, seven hundred dollars in cash on me. I saved up everything from holidays and babysat. I did all that. I wanted to buy a lot of stuff. I came away with a receipt that was taller than I was. I had tons of lures, and I got back home, and I had all these. Now, this is it. Not my collection of lures, it's, you know, Pixabay, all that stuff. But I had a ton of new tackle to use. Now, it did not make me a better fisherman, though. It did not make me into somebody who's going to catch a world record fish. Also from Pixabay Bay, I love this. So, I mean, the thing is, buying the tackle didn't do anything. It didn't change the fisherman I was. It didn't give me better techniques. I didn't automatically go and catch all the world record fish out of the lake, right? Nothing changed about that. What I had to do is learn new techniques. I had to learn more stuff, and I had to take practice with it. Now, the interesting thing is that I still have some of those lures that I bought in 1995 today. 
because some of them have never been used, because they never found the right situation to use them. It wasn't the right conditions, it wasn't the right fish I was going for, I just didn't have a reason to use that. I bought the lures, think I'd eventually use them, but I never did. So here's the analogy for technology in the classroom, right? There are a ton of lures out there. You can collect all the ones you want, like Pokemon, different analogy, so I should probably stick to fishing, but what are you going to use? But we can't use tech in the classroom if we don't know what tech's out there. So that's the trouble with this, right? I couldn't, if I go out to the water and I have like a bamboo fishing pole with just a wire and you know, a hook, I'm not going to catch a world-class fish. Maybe if I'm really, really lucky, I might. If I go out there with a seven-foot rod that's medium to heavy, I have my spider wire line on it, and I have the lure that I just tweaked just perfectly, I'm probably going to catch a really good fish. Uh, yeah, go back for a second. So, I have to know the tools, I have to have the lures, right? Then I gotta figure out how to use them. And then I have to practice. There are knots that I can tie in my sleep, still to this day, fishing knots. Just because of how many times I had to practice tying that knot. Because it matters what kind of knot you use to tie a lure, depending on what you're fishing. And there's certain lures that I have perfected the technique for. Like you take a spinner bait, you have it go slowly on the bottom of the lake, slowly twirling its blade ticks off the fish, and they just attack me like crazy. But that took a lot of practice. I had to learn all these things, and I had to try things. And I found that although my tackle box had all those lures, I have never used a good portion of those. But I found the lures that worked for the situation I was in, I tweaked the lures I had, I changed parts of them, and I got it to work right. So that's where this analogy came from. So wondering why we're talking about fishing at a tech company, I mean, at a tech conference. It's not just because you can use really cool tech when you go fishing. You know, this helps you find the fish, right? So we need to find the lures. So I want you to know this right now. This will take you to a wakelet. The only reason we're using wakelet instead of padlet is because I don't have any more padlets on this account. Ran out. Got my max. My school account, I had 72 padlets before they went paid. So I still have 72 available Padlets. My personal account, I have 12. And they're all full. Can't decide which one to get rid of. So we're going to use a weight clip for this. So should force you, it's a lower case, bit.ly, iTech lures. Um, we're going to have a question here, because you guys are here. Again, I'm not giving you the lures. I'm not giving you the tools today. But how do you find the tools? That's what we're going to share out. Because that is the first thing you need to be able to do. How are you going to find, how do you find those tech tools? When you're in the classroom, when you want to learn something new, what are the ways you do it? Is there somebody you follow on Twitter? Is there a website you go to? Because we're going to use this wakelet to share with other people in this room the ways that you guys find the stuff you need to use in the classroom. Because that is still step one. I mean, I can't use a spinnerbait to catch fish if I don't have the spinnerbait to begin with. Spinnerbait is a really cool lure I'll show you in a second for those of you non-fisher people. Um, but Go to that site right now. Add to it. This is really supposed to be kind of a collaborative thing, and so I'm going to stop talking in a little while because hopefully you guys get to work together. But if I go here right now, you guys should be able to add to this. And I actually haven't used Lakelet before in the session. I use Padlet, so it's a new tool for me, even though I've known about it for a while. And of course, the way I know about things, let's see. So for me, I'm just going to post a text right here. One of my favorite places to go is I want to chat on Twitter. All right? Did the link work for you guys? Yeah. I'll get it to make sure. Of course. Yeah. The tech guy ruins the link. You know it's a bad day. So, so like, where do you go? I want to check. For those of you that aren't on Twitter, don't uh, check it out. I always see good stuff in there. Uh, I have other people that I like to follow me for that. There we go. Free Tech for Teachers, definitely one of my favorite sites. So, add to it, share out with the room. The more ways you guys have to find the tools, it makes the second part of this easier. Like when I was 
growing up in Minnesota, I didn't really have a big need to use ever saltwater fishing lures. Or I never really saw some techniques that are used a lot in Arkansas and Florida to catch largemouth bass. What's called a Carolina rig. It's a technique that uses some simple stuff, but the how they did it was something I didn't get to see on the lake I fished on, because most people who fished on my lake went after walleyes and northerns. You don't go for walleyes and northerns with this technique. You go for bass. So some of those things are I had to go and watch TV shows. I got Bassmaster magazine. Yes, I was like a 10-year-old with a subscription to the Bassmaster magazine and in fisherman. Uh, I've been a nerd in a lot of different ways, whether it's fishing nerd or tech nerd, Pokemon nerd, I know. So, give you a few more minutes. If you have something, add it to there. Later on, here's the thing. You guys have the link, right? That's always going to be there. Come back later. You need to find a tool. You need a new resource. Go here. So, again, I'm not telling you the tools to use. There are a lot of tools out there. Tools change. My favorite phrase I've heard is, do not marry a tool, only date it. Tools come and go. I have people, I mean, when they lose a tool, they're like heartbroken. I mean, it's like worse than a divorce for them, I think, sometimes. Like, if somebody was like very sad one day, a tool went paid. And I'm like, no! And I'm like, it's okay. There's always going to be another one. And actually, to stick with the analogy, because I like stupid jokes, there's always another fish in the sea. There we go. Stupid jokes. All right. So, all right, we have some stuff up there. And you can keep adding to that. Um, Podcasts, if you do, I mean, EdTech Takeout, great podcast to put on there. A lot of different podcasts to put on there. If there's some YouTube channel you guys watch, um, even if you just go and follow somebody on Twitter, put that in there. So, this is step one, right? Getting access to the tools. Because you have to know what tools are out there in order to be using it. So again, I'm going to go back to this. For those who don't know, it's called a spinnerbait. It's shiny, and it attracts fish because it uses both light and sound to attract fish. It is a very versatile lure. More importantly, I can change a lot of things about this lure to catch fish. I can change out these blades because different shapes, different materials, different colors, different textures all produce different vibrations underwater. And it actually matters if you're talking about clear water versus dark water. If you're talking about a sunny day versus a cloudy day, it's talking about before a thunderstorm or after a thunderstorm. It all can impact what type of blades you use, what colors, what shapes, what size, all that. Not to mention, on here you have what's called a skirt. And literally in my tackle box, I have a whole lot of these skirts. And then you have other things you can add on to. This is actually a picture I took at home this weekend. I just in my tackle box and grabbed a couple lures out to take some pictures. The reason why I'm showing you the spinnerbait is the spinnerbait is a versatile tool that can be changed a lot of ways, but the best way to use it, you have to know the conditions. You have to understand what's going on in the water. You have to know what's going on with the fish in order to determine the best way to use that lure. Like I said, I'm a giant nerd, and yes, I pay attention to all these things. I'd be switching out the lure, and then when that spinnerbait would fly off because the line snapped and not come back, i go get another one. So... This one is that one. Some tools can be easily modified. There are no, I hate, I hate unitaskers. I'm like Alton Brown, right? Anybody watch Good Eats? No unitaskers. You find a tool that only does one thing well, how much time are you going to use that tool? What are you going to do with that? So now you have the tools. Now what? But like I said, I'm not going to tell you what to do. But this is a lure I bought in 1995. You know how it looks pretty clean? because it's never been used, never caught a fish with it, really never casted it. I have to get rid of this lure because I'm never going to use it. It doesn't do me any good. And you probably have a ton of tech tools you know about that you've never used because you never found the right situation to use it. So we don't need those tools. So, a couple things I think you need to do. And this is kind of where we're going to diverge a little bit and we're going to kind of see what people have for ideas. Because you're going to leave a conference today, right? How many of you actually have an action plan for to implement something you ordered today? What's going to happen tomorrow, though, when you get to school and you see the sub notes and then all of a sudden somebody's sick and you have to cover somebody's sub session? I know right now I have like 40 emails I didn't read today. I'm scared to look at my phone. I know something broke. I don't care what right now. But I know that tomorrow I would love to be able to implement all the stuff that I have and all the ideas in my head. 
If I'm going to get there, stuff's going to happen, right? So how do you guarantee that you get to implement something? That you do something differently, right? So stating a goal, stating a purpose. What is something you definitely want to change, long term, short term? How are you going to hold yourself accountable to that? Is there someone else you can have useful to help you with that? How many of you have an instructional coach in your building? Or are the instructional coach in your building? All right. I mean, TLC grant was good for one thing. Got a lot of coaches in the building, and I was a tech coach. So I was the person who was there. I could help people. I'm not going to have the answers, but I can ask you questions. I can do observations for you. I can help you focus. That's hopefully what your coach can do. They're not going to have the answers. They're there to support you, hopefully. Um, you have a friend in the building. You have a friend outside the building. You got social media. They probably hold it. But what is a goal you want to do? Like I know this morning, one thing popped in my head is I need, there are a couple things I need to focus on in my district. If I'm in a new position, I'm still trying to figure some things out. So I'm trying to figure out the goals that are achievable. Almost like a smart goal. I mean, that's not a bad thing. Specific, measurable, attainable, RT. I um, always forget them after the A. Oh, there you go. face. Uh, anyways, so need a goal purpose, right? If we don't have a focus, we're just going to do whatever. You're going to use a tool because it's shiny. Uh, remember I told you that the spinnerbait is effective because it uses light? It's a very shiny lure. There's a reason why shiny lures catch fish. It gives them something to go with. There's a reason why shiny tech tools catch you. I mean, how many people have used Flipgrid? Huh? Flipgrid can be a very shiny tool. It can be easily distracted because there's a lot of buzz on it. If you're on social media, you see a lot of people using it. But when you look at the use of Flipgrid, are you actually doing anything different than you did in the past? Is it actually making an impact on your students? If not, what could you be doing differently? If nothing, then why are you using it? You have to justify everything you do. You should have a goal, a purpose, something you can go to. Um, even if we use paper in a textbook, we should have to justify that. No one does. That's like the default. I just call the lecture model the default model. You can always fall back on it. There's my textbook, there's my quiz, there's my test. If something goes wrong with this idea, I can always fall back on that, right? But we never have to justify it. So, but if you have a goal or a purpose, hopefully that can help you justify it. And know if you're doing something well or not. Are you making a change? Are you doing something better? Is it making a difference? I like footprint, but I have seen it used in very superficial ways that were just a waste of time and energy. It passed the class period, they didn't really do anything, they did it for a day, they moved on. But I've also seen teachers use it to actually do something better than they've done in the past. So the tool doesn't tell you how you use it, it's gonna be how you use it in terms of the effectiveness of the tool. Trial and error play. How many people love to fail? All right, no. So one of my video game players in the house. I guess I just said in the house, we just marked that from my records. Okay, how many people play video games? All right, so I know exactly what I'm doing tonight because I've not been home for the last two nights or so. My son been asked me to play a game with him. And you all know the game. I have to go and update all our systems so I can go play Fortnite with him. He's nine years old, he only gets to play Fortnite with me. So I have to play it. And he's going to die, he's going to die a lot. He's going to fail a lot. The thing I try to teach my son is that it's okay to fail, it's okay to die, you get respawned. You know, that's the beauty of video games, right? You have to learn from it. He's nine though, or will be on Thursday, so he's eight and almost nine. He still at this point, will get very upset when he dies. I mean, very upset. I'm like, buddy, hit respawn. There we go, start a new game. I'm like, you're gonna die. People are gonna be better than you. They're not all like cheating or something like that. So play with the tools, right? People ask me, how do I know so much about the tools? I play, I literally just push buttons and see what happens. That's why I'm not allowed in like rooms with all the buttons for like audio visual because I'll go, ooh, what does this do? That doesn't end well. Uh, but with tech tools, you're not going to break your computer. That's the beauty of computers out there. You really can't break them unless you physically break them. Like Chromebooks, right? You can't break your Chromebook by hitting something wrong. It doesn't happen. Your MacBooks, maybe so. PCs, I'm sorry. But I mean, it's that. I'm a little biased. Can't help it. Luckily, my district is too, so we're okay. But I mean, you got to play. You're not going to screw anything up, right? People are very afraid to play. That's why, okay, I hate the term digital natives, and I feel like all I'm doing is going on tangents. I'm going to make sure we have time. Um, but I don't like the term digital natives. Yeah, kids grew up with this technology. But the only reason why they used it because they weren't afraid of it. The first time I had my son a tablet, he wasn't like scared. He was going to change the settings on it. I had my parents a new smartphone, and they're very afraid of it. I'm like, okay, here's a big difference here. 
afraid or not, just play with it. And what's the worst that's going to happen? You can't. You, you have to restart it. You have to reboot it. Turn it off and on again. That's how you fix all the problems. That is how you fix all the problems. I'm a tech director now, and that's all I want to say to people. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Well, I fixed it. Awesome. I had to walk to the building for that. No. Um. So, play. Trial and error. Test it out. Play with someone else. I mean, you're not going to become an expert. Tim. If you need to know where, I mean, how to do something, where do you go? Same place I went to install a kitchen sink, a stove, and everything else. YouTube, right? There's got to be a video on it. If you're at my very, very energetic session yesterday on spreadsheets, because spreadsheets is just like, no, I, mean, I love spreadsheets. But the thing is, all those things I did in spreadsheets, I have videos on, or I've watched videos on. So let me get that. We're fine to get another perspective. We don't do this enough. I think everybody should become an instructional coach at some point. Because the day I got to become a coach, the day I got to step out of the classroom, I got to take a breath. Like for nine years, I was teaching high school science. I taught in three districts. I taught a total of 10 different subjects, pretty much. I had five principals in seven years in three districts. I had a lot of different initiatives I had to work on. So but it felt like for nine years, I was just full on pace. Became a tech coach. Uh, got out of the classroom. I got to watch other people teach. And as I watched other people talk, I thought about my own teaching. Like, I learned so much that first year as a tech coach about my own teaching that I did about other people. Just because I got a chance to think. I got a chance to reflect. I got to have conversations with other people, and you can't help it. If you have someone, if you as a coach help someone have a reflecting conversation, you cannot help yourself have your own reflecting conversation about the same topic. My brain was doing that. I'm trying to focus on them, but in my head, I'm like, oh, crap, I did that wrong when I was in the classroom. So reflect. Have somebody watch. Get input on it. See, people need to be humble more. We're so scared of other people judging us. We're going to make mistakes, and that's okay. We're learners. Our kids are learners. And I know people are afraid to make mistakes in front of their students. I do that all the time. I mean, my kids almost expected it. There's the time, the giant glass beaker, when they looked it off the hot plate, and the bottom didn't come with the rest of the beaker. That was fun. And the time the light bulb shattered because of electrostatic charge buildup, that was fun. The time I sat on the edge of the table and the table went down and me with it, okay, that wasn't that fun. But, I mean, the thing was that I always told my kids, okay, we make mistakes, we learn from it, we move on. You're going to do that. So reflecting their perspective, I have seen a lot of people I thought that could benefit from a coach or somebody else watching them, but they're so worried to be called a fraud or something else. They're seen as wrong or not as smart or not as good. That, that stopped them. And I think that's the worst thing about teaching is we've gotten to this point a lot of times where we're so afraid to see even like we don't know what we're doing. I'm trying to say that a whole lot. There's a great talk. If you go on YouTube, you do a search for M Emily Anhalt. It's called the imposter syndrome. She has a great talk about it and honestly, give it a watch. She's a psychologist and I listened to her at an ed tech conference. And it was probably the best session I've had in about two years. Keep moving forward. Where are my cyclone fans? Uh, okay. But no one's happy. We come out, we're almost frank to get. So, I mean, the thing is that um, I have a poster in my office signed by Paul Rhodes. I know he's not a coach anymore. That's okay. But mostly I keep that poster in there, not just because I won it on Twitter. And I win a lot of things on Twitter. That's why I love Twitter, many other reasons. But it's about one direction forward, or keep moving forward. I think that's it. And that's the thing, honestly. You have to keep moving forward. You know, don't get stuck. What's next? What's next? Anybody ever watch West Wing? I rewatched the whole series a couple weeks ago, just because. Why not? I have so much free time. So, and that was the kind of thing. President Bartlett was always, what's next? So keep moving forward. That's my son when he was younger, catching his first fish. He wasn't sure what the heck to make of this little slimy thing in his hand, but he caught it. But the thing is that we all were at that point at some point. We're all that beginner. So that's his first fish. What's going to be his next fish? How's he going to keep going forward? And I mean, where are you now? Where do you want to be? Because who you are today should not be who you are in a year or two years or 10 years. I gave a talk one time at uh, Fort Madison. I was there to help with some professional development. And so I got the chance to talk for like 50 or so minutes, kind of like I'm doing now, but to the whole staff. And all I do is title the first slide is new possibilities. Because that's what tech gives us is new possibilities, right? If all you're doing is a digital substitution of what you've done in the past, nothing's going to change. So I talked about accessibility was my last session. There's so many awesome tools out there that have new ways of doing that. 
that I'm going tomorrow, my number one goal tomorrow is help this high school student who has a hearing issue. I'm going to go to the high school, I'm going to talk to the kid, I'm going to go to their classes, figure out a solution for them. And I know I can because I have all this cool tech that allows me to do it. I had a student who had vision acuity issue. He couldn't really see anything beyond like here. And he was going to struggle in his classes, but I'm like, well, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this, all stuff we could do 10 years ago. It's all new possibilities. So even in my classroom where I taught science and I had a textbook that was outdated, said Pluto was a planet, that could have been a problem in the past. But I found digital textbooks that are free online, YouTube videos, articles, all this information I could give to my students that they could pick and choose what best helped them read. Because you have kids with reading difficulties, hearing difficulties, vision difficulties, all these challenges. You have new possibilities now you could do in the past. Um, so take advantage of them, try different things. Beware of the shiny, that is a phrase I say. I, my wife and I both have what, what I refer to as the power of the squirrel. That's the nice way of saying ADD, ADHD. We're kind of both on that spectrum. She's diagnosed, I am scared to go see a doctor. So it's kind of one of those things where we're, we always are kind of, one of our inside jokes is, beware of the shiny, or you're easily distracted, ooh, shiny. You know, like websites and tools. Beware of the tools that are very shiny but have no substance to them. Like a cubic zirconium, you know, a fake dime, right? There's not a lot of value to that, but it looks shiny. I, I taught earth science, so I had like all these shiny materials. I had a kid try to steal one one time. I'm like, <laughs> that's funny. I got like a bucket of them in the back room because they're so cheap. I go out to a quarry and get them. I mean, because he thought it was expensive. It was worthless, pretty much. So beware of the shiny. Those tools that will pull you in and say, oh, we can do this, but really, what are you doing? What is the difference? How is this better than what we've done in the past? Collaborate, don't go alone. You don't live on an island. You gotta find other people to work with. That's why I like technology. Um, I taught at a rural school for five years. I was the only physics teacher, I was the only earth science teacher and stuff like that. I used social media to connect with other people because they had other ideas. There was no other physics teacher in the building to tell me what they were doing. So I'd go and collaborate with other people. But then I also had people in the building who were doing some really cool things. We were trying to figure out how can we do more standard reference stuff, more formative assessment. Those are things we wanted to focus on. They taught Spanish, I taught physics, but we were still able to work together, come up with some new ideas. So collaborate, work with other people. And again, that kind of goes into that ego, that humbleness, be able to learn from each other, be able to reach out and ask for help. A lot of people get stuck in that. I know I've worked with a lot of teachers over the years. Do you tell that they're so worried what other people would think of them? They didn't want to work with other people, they didn't want people in their classroom. Actually, we did have a teacher, oh, this is a fun story. We had a teacher who was a mentor. And I'm going to do this because of the story I'm telling you, you say why I don't think they should have been a mentor to a new teacher. The new teacher, of course, has to go observe the mentors, right? So the new teacher's in there, say, observing their lesson, they had a quick conversation afterwards. New teacher asks the mentor, oh, would you like to come in my room and see what I'm doing? The, new, the mentor said, no, I don't need to see you. Yeah. That was a very interesting statement. That's somebody who doesn't collaborate. And the last thing I say is commit to action. Because all the learning you had yesterday and today, if you're here for two days, even listening to Joe this morning or any other sessions you've gone to, are useless if you don't actually do anything with it. That lure I showed you, been in my tackle box for 24 years. It's still shiny because I keep it clean, but what use was it? Why did I spend the money on it? I never used it. You can spend all this time learning, but if you're not doing anything with the learning, what good is it? So again, I didn't give you any tools today. I can give you tons of tools. What you do today is kind of dependent on what you do today. Everything you learned today, what are you going to do with it? So what are some ways you think you're going to become a better fisherman tomorrow, so to speak? And yes, I was going to put better fisher person, but it sounded better when I said fisherman. I don't know. This isn't phrasing. I am trying to be very, very good at my inclusive language, and ableism, too, is one big area I'm working on. And I'm not actually joking about that. It's actually an area I'm working on, which is why I have people that call me out on it, and I've asked them to do that. So, so what are some ways you guys are going to change or focus on how to implement what you've learned or keep learning? Anybody want to share? I mean, I can use my wait time, but I won't do it. So. Yeah. Bar 
hours scheduled to time. How many of you ever have a scheduled time to meet with somebody to reflect or to plan or to just collaborate? A set time that can't get overridden. Good. I think that's if you put it in your calendar and say, nope, nothing's going to change this. You know, that helps, right? Do I have the time? Oh, okay. I'm going to go one more tangent. Okay, one more tangent for right now. But never say you don't have time. We have time for our priorities. So if you want to get better, that has to be a priority. If stuff is taking up your time and it's not a priority, get rid of it. As a teacher, there's so many things I think we can get rid of. There is a lot of content we don't need to teach or cover. There's a lot of things we grade that may not need to be graded. There's a lot of the stuff that maybe we do that doesn't actually impact student learning. So if we can get it off our plate, get rid of it, that's good. My favorite year of teaching is the year I didn't grade any homework for my ninth graders. Literally didn't grade a thing. Every quiz they took, we went over it together one-on-one -on -one with them. The only things I graded were the tests or the projects. And even then, it wasn't a final grade. But again, my freshman students, think how much less work I had to take home, how much more time I had to plan to reflect, to focus on that. Because I figured out that after I saw that kid throw that assignment in the trash after you looked at it for a millisecond, I'm like, well, that wasn't worth my time. How much time did I spend grading it the night before, making sure the cat wasn't laying on the papers, trying to find a quiet spot to do this, and I get it to the kid and it goes in the trash. At least put in the recycling. But I mean, it just wasn't worth the time, right? So what else? Do I have any ways to do this? To keep learning? Yep. Well, our faculty meetings that we have once a month, we have what we call Tech 10, where um, the Tech Committee and people at our conferences get 10 minutes to present something out to the rest of the staff that we've learned or done or something to track. How many of you are required to share back what you've learned this week? See, I think it should be everybody. And I know it's more work for us, oh well. But I mean, I sent for my district, I, know, I paid, well, I only paid for like, oh yeah, I paid for seven people to come here. Uh, and then a couple others that came out of my budget. But there are other people here, and I asked them to share out. So there's a Padlet that I have for them, four questions. And my thing is, I want to share it out. I want to share out their learning, because it's no good if you just hog it, right? Share it out. Anything else? Anybody have a specific action plan or a step they're going to take next? Yeah. Do you have anybody to help you with that? Um, yeah. Really? Probably gonna have some people who won't want to do that, right? I think it's always tough when we're trying to do something. We have somebody who works next door to us who doesn't want to do it, and if they badmouth it, so how are you protecting yourself from that too? The toxicity of oh, I can't use that word. Um, see, my word usually for those people who are always holding us back, I call them cancers, and that's not good. But honestly, that's how I feel sometimes. You know, they don't want to change, they want to do anything different, they want to keep everything status quo because it's comfortable. But you have toxic people around you, right? So we, we did a thing for a while where instructional coaches, we talked about walnuts and marigolds. And there's this whole story to go with, and I can't remember it. All I know is every week I was supposed to write down a marigold and a walnut. Avoid the walnuts because they made the soil toxic. Find the marigolds. People who bring you up, people who work with that. I have some boxer groups that I know if I need something, I send it out. I have some people I follow on Twitter. When I need to get my head in check, those are people I go and see what they tweeted. And then I just have people I have conversations with. I try to find excuses to get into a couple of my buildings just to go talk to someone sometimes. Oh, that router needs to be unplugged and plugged in again. I'll go do that. Not that I did that last week. Um, so I hope you have somebody positive that can help you. Avoid the toxic. Don't know what your staff lunchrooms are like. The reason I always ate lunch in my classroom. It's not venting. It's toxic. So I guess they are venting, just toxic fumes, right? I love analogies, by the way. Anyway, so what else? Anybody else have anything else they're going to implement? How many of you write down what you're going to do next? I don't care if it's a Google Doc, piece of paper, or something like that. You actually write down. Maybe create a calendar event a week from today. 
reflecting on what did you learn? What have you done differently? Take time to reflect, sit in your classroom. My first year of teaching, the thing, best thing I think I did for myself is at the end of every day, I go and sit in one of my students' chairs. Concentrate to figure out how to get better. If I didn't take the time to sit in their chair, think about the day from their viewpoint, give me time to reflect. Which may look weird if you just walk by a classroom and you see a teacher sitting in a student chair staring at the whiteboard, but that's what I did. I'm okay being weird. I've gotten used to that a long time ago. So. Now, man, they're loud. So, <laughs> supposedly we still have like 15 minutes left, but I'm going to kind of leave at that. The whole point of this session in my head was just to make sure we had time to think about how we're going to do things differently. You picked up a lot of new lures the last two days, you've been here for two days, but if you leave today and nothing ever changes, then this whole conference was worthless. And we do this a lot. We go to places, we think, we come away with a lot of energy. I don't know, I came away with a lot of energy today, and I know when I get home tonight, I'm going to check those emails. I'm going to respond to people. I'm going to feel tired. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to wake up tomorrow. I'm not really hoping for the day. But i got to figure out a way to keep myself moving forward. And I don't need to wait until next October to keep learning something new, right? So you, the one resource I gave you today is that link. There you go. And yeah, in the, um, I think I put the slide deck in the section resources. But that link there, you at least know you have some ideas for where you can learn the tools. What you do with that, well, that's on you. So that's all I had. I hope it was useful. It was a different type of session for me because normally I have a lot of tools because I love tools and I'm very shiny. But you can find them all on my blog. Uh, anyway, so if you have anything for me, yeah. Uh, it's the um, imposter syndrome. Emily Anhalt. And I don't enunciate well. Emily and Halt. There we go. You can tell I've searched this before. All right, she actually. There's a couple videos she has on this one. I think this is my favorite. So I'll kind of do this if you see this. But it's. Yeah, it's. Well, that's not good. So if you do a search on YouTube, like I said, Dr. Emily and Halt, Imposter Syndrome, you'll find some good videos. I think this is my favorite of that one. Just because, well, for me, I'll be honest with you, I entered a whole brand new role this year. So mid-January, I switched from tech coach to tech director. Like that. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, this is going to be fun. Um, and not for a small district. I'm in Ames. So, but it was fun because it's a new challenge. A whole new challenges. But I also know, well, I'm going to fall into this trap a lot, the imposter syndrome. Feeling like I don't know things or don't know how to do things. I'm going to look like a failure and all this stuff. This is actually a really great TED Talk, and she talks a lot about social emotional health and stuff like that. So she has a lot of great resources, Instagram, Twitter, she's all on there, some good videos. Actually, my favorite new follow of the last year. They say that, she has nothing about tech in there, just about brain, which, you know, you need to use tech, so that's a good thing. So I'll leave that link up there. So I hope you guys had a great session. I hope you had a great conference. I hope you go away from this doing something different so you can help your students better learn. So, thank you.